Some of the answers to the review questions for the final exam. Uh, in this question, you are given the displacement, and all you have to do is take the first derivative because velocity is dx by dt. And uh, once you get that, you substitute the time, and then if you take the derivative again, differentiate again, you get acceleration. So you have position, velocity, and acceleration. And the one thing that you notice here is that the acceleration is a constant. And uh, in this second question, uh, the driver of a car slams on the brakes when he sees a tree blocking the road. And the car slows uniformly with an acceleration of uh, that's actually 5.60 because 25.60 is really high and he has the acceleration for 4.20 seconds making straight skid marks 62.4 meter long all the way to the tree with what speed does the car then strike the tree well we do not have the initial velocity here so you got to find the initial velocity we could use this equation rearrange that and you get now that becomes positive because a is actually negative so you have two two negatives making a positive here so a is negative so two negatives make a positive Okay, and I've taken it as 25.60, but I'm going to correct it. Because, you know, that's really, really, really big. So I changed it right there. So you get one equation. Now, we can get another equation using x is v0 plus vf divided by 2 multiplied by t, which is displacement is average velocity multiplied by time. So displacement is 62.4 and uh, I have substituted for V0 here as VF plus 23.52, correct? Okay. Time is 4.20 and we can solve that equation to get the final velocity. Oh, it hits the tree at 3.10 meter per second. Brings us to the third. Here is there is a hockey player standing on his skates on a frozen pond. An opposing player uh, moving at a uniform speed of 12 meter per second skates by. And this guy waits for three seconds and then is, makes up his mind to catch his opponent. He accelerates uniformly at four meter per second squared. The question is, how long does it take him to catch his opponent and how far has he traveled in that time? Assume that the, the first player with the puck is uh, moving at constant speed, okay? Now after three seconds, the player with the puck has already traveled. Well, that's the opponent here. He's already moved through 36 meters okay 12 meter per second times 3 now after t seconds more than that so after t seconds more this guy who is chasing him 
starts off from rest and that's why V0 is 0. So this whole term is missing and you have half times 4. Now notice that the time is t plus 3. The opponent is 12 times t, or that means the total that the opponent has traveled is 36 plus 12 times t. So you have two equations here. Okay, so that is supposed to be t, okay, because this, this guy has traveled for t seconds. So I've corrected that, t seconds, so now substitute or just put the right hand sides equal to each other and solve the quadratic equation and uh, you will get the answer okay let me speed this up a little bit when you use this quadratic form that you get t is 12 plus or minus gives you 8.19 seconds and put it back into one of the equations and you get distance moved is 134.35 meter brings us to this a student throws a set of keys vertically upwards and uh, a person four meters above catches the keys 1.5 seconds later. What was the initial velocity? What was the velocity of the keys just before they were caught? Okay, so two questions. Use the equation. And uh, we know that the displacement is four meters given. And the time was 1.5, so... You know why it's negative because it's going up. So rearrange all that and uh, calculate this part gives you 11.025. And from there you get the initial velocity. It's 10 meter per second. Now to find the final velocity just before it was caught. negative 4.7 meter per second. The negative sign shows that it was cut on the way down. Because the direction of initial velocity is taken as positive. Number five, this crazy dog is running uh, first to the south and then to the northeast and then 15 meters to the west. <coughs> we got to find the displacement and of course the displacement is this straight distance from the starting to the finishing okay and displacement is AD that's negative 3.5 J this is 8.2 cos 45 I plus 8.2 sine 45 I that's when you take the components of these two 1 and 2 okay so that gives 5.8i plus 5.8j. And of course the third one is negative 15j. So now add the i's, the j's and the k's together. Don't mix them up please. Like I did. Because this was negative 15i. Yes. Now you get it as minus 9.2i plus 2.3j and the displacement is the magnitude of this vector which is sum of the squares and then take the square root gives 9.48 meter okay the eye of a hurricane is moving in a direction 60 degrees. Remember, this is just 60 degrees, okay? North of west. 
with the speed 41 km per hour. What's the unit vector expression? Simple enough. Just resolve it into two. 41 cos 16, 41 sine 60, which gives you 20.5, but that's along the negative direction. So negative 20.5i. This is along the positive. So it's positive 35.5j. Good. 7. It's a local bar. A customer slides an empty beer mug. Uh, he's had one too many. Down the counter, okay, and it uh, just slides off. The height of the counter is 1.22 meters. That's this height. The mug slides off the counter, strikes the floor 1.40 meter from the base. Initial vertical velocity is zero. Time taken, we do not know, but delta y is 1.22 meters. Okay, you always split it up into the horizontal and the vertical. Now, using this equation, remember the first term is zero. You could calculate the time. The answers are not appearing. I had written it. Okay, anyway. To find the final velocity just before it hits the ground, use this equation and find it. So, okay, now I know why because I had made some calculation mistake. Alright, so the time is 0.499 and from there you get the initial velocity is 2.806 meter per second here then you find the angle at which it falls tan theta so actually the angle is 29.385 a football player must kick a football from a point 36 meters away from there at 53 degrees and the question is by how much does the ball oh, I'm sorry how much does the ball clear or fall short okay so you can find the time because you know that the horizontal component of the velocity is 20 cos 53 and the horizontal component is a constant so to find the time divide the displacement by the velocity you get it as 2.991 seconds then use that to find the vertical displacement the vertical velocity initially is 20 sine 53 Now remember this is a review and uh, that's why I'm going quite fast. You're already used to all these topics. So you get 3.94 meter. But the height of the crossbar was only 3.05 meter. That means it crosses the bar by 0 0.89 meter and that is by rising. While rising, how do we know that it's while rising because we got this y as positive if it was while well falling then it would have been negative electron has a mass given speed given travels in a straight line speed increases to uh, a huge value in a distance of five centimeter find the force force is mass times acceleration and the acceleration in this case is Found out using Vf squared minus V0 squared by 2d. Substitute, that's the final velocity squared. Minus the initial velocity squared divided by 2 times 5 centimeter, which in meter is 0 0.05. When you do all that and calculate, you get 3.644 times 10 to the negative 18 newtons.
Now compare this with the weight of the electron. Weight is mg mass times 10.8, which is really much, much smaller than the other force. Now when you take the ratio, get 4 times 10 to the 11. Number 10, a coin is placed 30 centimeters from the center of a rotating turntable. What force causes the centripetal acceleration? And what is the equation of static friction? Okay, centripetal force is mv squared by r, velocity given, and uh, you've got to change it into meters, that's why it's 0.5, distance from the center, again 30 centimeters is changed into meters, and uh, this is 0 0.83 times the mass, remember this is not meters, it's a mass, and coefficient of friction is frictional force by the normal reaction. And uh, the normal reaction in this case is mg because it's a flat surface. And the masses get cancelled and get the coefficient of friction as 0 0.085, no unit. This bullet strikes the hand of a superhero and because he's a superhero, he stops it by the time it moves 5.50 centimeters. You have to use the work and energy considerations to find the average force. Remember that work is equal to change in kinetic energy. And again, uh, work is force times displacement. So put those two equal to each other and you get force is change in kinetic energy divided by displacement. Change in kinetic energy, one half times the mass, velocity squared. We stopped it in 0 0.055 meters. And so the force is that number correct? I need to check that again. Now to find the time, you can use the change in momentum by the force. Okay, that number was not right. I had to put it into the calculator again and got the force as 2.34 times 10 to the 4. That changes the time to 1.91 times 10 to the negative 4 seconds. Crate of mass 10 kilogram is pulled up a rough incline. Now look at the forces acting. Uh, you have the weight acting down and you're pulling it up so friction is down. This is the applied force and then of course you have the normal reaction. And in this case you're going to have to resolve the weight into the two components. Okay, so this side is 5 sine 20 being the opposite side. Gravitational force work done is MGH, and that's the H, okay? 167.5 joules. Increase in internal energy. And, okay. And I here I just forgot to multiply with 5. I'm going to do that. At the end, okay, I've forgotten the 5. It's going to change the number. See how much work is done by the 100 Newton force. Well, that's just 100 times 5 because it moved it up by 5 meters, right? And 100 was along that direction. And uh, because this answer is going to change, that's going to change this as well. Okay. All because I forgot to multiply with this 5 here.
Okay, so when I multiply with 5, I get 184. That changes this answer. 148 and 7.68 meter per second is the speed of the crate after being pulled 5 meters. Baseball approaches at 45 and at the batsman or the batter hits it hits a pop-up uh, so that means it goes straight up moving at 55 so the initial momentum is along this direction PI and the final is along the upward direction PF and to find the force you got to find the change in momentum which is PI minus PF so what do we do you take the opposite of PF which is this and add PI plus negative PF which will give you this correct okay that's what I'm doing so force multiplied by time because it's in milliseconds okay is mass times Because uh, this side is going to be the sum of the squares of this side, right? That's what I'm using. So I get 230.4 newtons. Oh, again a calculation mistake. All right, so 5,152 newtons. That is the force. Rotating wheel requires 3 seconds to rotate through 37 revolutions. 37 revolutions is 37 times 2 pi radians. Because one rotation is equal to 2 pi radians. Initial angle velocity is 0. So can find alpha using this equation well actually the initial angular speed is not given so you can find that out using this relation So once you get it, you can use alpha is change in angular velocity divided by time. So 13.67 radians per second squared. Okay, you have a particle attached to the 100 centimeter mark of a meter stick. You have to find the angular momentum. Angular momentum is I omega. So now you have to find I, which is the rotational inertia of the meter stick, which is ML squared by 12, plus the particle, which is MR squared. 1 meter, okay. This particle is 50 centimeters away, that's 0.5. So once you get the rotational inertia, multiply that with the angular speed, which is given as 4. You get the angular momentum. But what if it is rotating through the 0 centimeter mark? Then I is ml squared by 3. But for the particle, it's mr squared. Remember, the formula is the same, but the distance is now changed to one meter. There you go. So it has a much bigger rotational inertia. And therefore, the angular momentum is going to be higher too. So you get 1.73 kilogram meter squared rad per second. Oh, this is the ladder question. The force is acting on the ladder. 
or the normal force at the point of contact with the ground force of friction the normal force at the wall the weight of the ladder and the weight of the person the normal reactions are labeled n1 and n2 are taking the calculating the torque about this point get 800 times you know you always need to take this distance and this distance is going to be 4 sin 30 now remember that i've taken it as sin 30 because although this angle is 60 degrees this angle is 30 right and if you take that angle as 30 then this is going to be the opposite side so either way whether you take it as cos 60 or sin 30 you get the same thing and so these two create the clockwise torques and the distances are this and for the second one this distance which is what is given here for sin 30 7.5 sin 30 the counterclockwise force is created by this normal reaction and uh, the distance of this force look at that from this point is actually this much which becomes this side which will be 15 cos 30 that's all there is to in this problem so you can rearrange and calculate n2 268 newtons in the b part what is the coefficient of static friction if he is able to go 9 meters from the bottom okay you do the problem the same way to calculate n2 you would get it as 422 421 and that is actually the force of friction why because n2 oh n2 here should be equal to the force of friction cause the forces must be balanced both along the x axis and the y axis there's only two forces there are only two forces along the x axis so they must be equal once you know friction you know friction is mu times n and in this case n1 is actually the sum of 800 and 500 so you can calculate friction coefficient of friction as 421 by 1300 0.324 this question on young's model is direct and it's stress divided by strain make the extension the subject is plug in the numbers you get the answer as approximately point 005 meter and uh, you can make like that okay container is filled to a depth of 20 cm with water on top of the water floats a 30 cm thick layer of oil with specific gravity 0.7 what's the absolute pressure at the bottom of the container you know because this oil is floating on top of that you need not consider the pressure exerted by it because water is pushing on it upwards so you just need to find the pressure due to the water here and of course you need to add the atmospheric pressure to get the absolute pressure so that's what i'm doing find the pressure due to the water column alone that that's the atmospheric pressure and uh, you get the total pressure at the 
the absolute person at the bottom. This object executes simple harmonic motion, period given. Total energy. Total energy of the system is one half k a squared, but remember omega is two pi by t. Find omega. And remember that omega is square root k by m from which you can find k. Pass in kilograms, and square of omega, you get the k in newton per meter. And then to find the amplitude of the motion, just plug it back into the first equation, make a the subject. Because the total energy is given. And uh, that's a calculation mistake for sure because you can't have, that's a big amplitude. So let's see what happened. Okay, uh, I took the wrong number. Yes, yes, use the wrong number. I totally, instead of taking 25.12, I used this. All right, so many mistakes. That's the disadvantage of doing things so fast, you know. Okay. And now you have the right answers. That's considerably more realistic. 22. Oh. You see, there's 9 grams of water in a 2 liter pressure cooker that is then warmed to 500 degrees Celsius. What's the pressure inside the container? Now this is a good question because most people would forget that there is also air in the pressure cooker. So you got to find the pressure due to the water vapor and then the pressure due to the air and then I'm add them up. The molecular mass of H2O is 18 grams. Here there are 9 grams. And so the number of moles, okay, let me run this. So the number of moles is 0 0.5, use PV is equal to NRT, okay, that's the temperature there, and the volume in meter cube, you get the pressure due to water vapor. Then, assuming that the initial temperature of air is 20 degrees Celsius, Use P1 by T1 is equal to P2 by T2 to find the final pressure due to air and then add these two numbers up to get the total pressure in megapascals. Uh, you can neglect this question, not required, and this one. Gas in a container is at a pressure of 1.5 atmospheres in a volume 4 meter cube. What's the work done on the gas? If it expands at constant pressure, because it expands at constant pressure, work done is PDV. That's the pressure, but you need to change it into pascals. There are multiplied. It. Change in volume is, is 4. Because from 4 it goes to 8, the change is 4. And in the second case, if it's compressed at constant pressure to one quarter of its initial volume, this time work is being done on the system, so it's negative. Change in pressure is 3, I mean change in volume. Change in volume is 3 quarter. Because from 1, minus a 1 quarter is 3 quarters. And the last one, how much work is required using an ideal Carnot refrigerator to change 0.5 kilogram of tap water at 10 degrees Celsius into ice at, my goodness, that's not 220, that makes no sense. It's minus 20 degrees Celsius, again, minus 20 degrees Celsius. So first you need to cool the water, then remove the heat in it to convert it into ice and then again cool the ice. 
and these are the three processes that you see. Heat required to cool the water, heat required to change water into ice, and then heat required to cool the ice. That's the specific heat of ice. And once you get this, you know there are two formulas for coefficient of performance. Put them together, QC by work and TC by TH minus TC. Rearrange from this, make work the subject. Because remember this is QC, what we got here is QC. And uh, TH is uh, 293, right? TC is 253. Okay, 2.8 times 10 to the 5. That was and you get 32.9 kilojoules and here are the answers to the 24 questions and hope they are useful for you. Thank you and good luck.